All right, guys, so why would we really care or use event components? Um, the fact that we can reuse this component means we can use it to represent a lot. Uh, we can use this code template to present a lot of different um, information on our screen at the same time, uh, but information which needs to follow a certain pattern. So for example, let's pretend for a moment that we're creating some kind of admin dashboard for a teacher or, or a sales team manager or something. Any kind of manager, really. Um, I'm going to create a new component based on the same one. But I'm going to call this one, what we're going to do for the, we're going to do the teacher example. So I'm going to call this app student. It's always a good idea to prefix your component names with app or my, something like that, so as to be absolutely positive that you're not <clears throat> conflicting with an actual HTML element, which you don't want to do. So I'll bring back our template, which will contain the same div, the class of call dash four, and we'll follow the same pattern. We'll have um, an h3 that says the student's name. We'll have a paragraph that says their role. And then we'll have another paragraph that says their progress or score or um, quota, whatever it is. 76%. Just like we were doing. Um, and finally, I'm going to add a button in here, which we want to be able to use to say, flag this person. Flag them because we need to make an appointment with them. We need to call them. We need to talk to them about something. We need to flag them for some reason. Because I, they, they, we need to call attention to them. Okay, so I'm going to save. And let's create that app student component a couple times. All right, so no surprises there. However, uh, the key is going to be replacing this static information, Evan, student, and 76%, with dynamic information. The reality is that this component that we're building has a data object of its own. We're not seeing it yet, but it does have one. So in the same way that we used interpolation to present message, hello world, I am a message. On our page, we, we can do the same to present a unique name, role, and progress percentage inside each component. So I'm going to replace this data with things like name. And I'll replace student with role. And I'll replace 76% with progress. So just like message in our HTML looked for the message property in the data object of our master view instance, name, role, and progress in the template of this component is going to look for the name property in the data object of this component, and the role property in the data object of this component, and progress property in the data object of this component. Okay, so we can do that. We could actually come down here and set up a data object for this component. But we don't want static data. We don't want static data. We don't want the name every time to be Evan. So rather than store that ahead of time in a pre-made data object like this, we're instead going to pass this component, this data, when it is created. Okay, when we create a component, we're going to use attributes in our HTML to tell it what name, role, and progress should be. And the first step in that is to tell the component to expect these attributes, to expect this information. And we're going to do that with props, short for properties. If you're familiar with React, this should be a very familiar concept to you. And if you're not, this concept is very ubiquitous to React. Um, 
just one more example of how learning Vue will absolutely help you master React if that's your end goal. Um, although, as always, I say try to look past the trappings of the language and try to keep yourself language agnostic. Try to learn the programmatic habits of these frameworks. Anyway, props or properties is going to need to be an array of strings. And the strings are going to represent the names of the properties which it needs to expect. So it needs to expect name, it needs to expect role, it needs to expect progress. This will create a name property in the implicit data object of this component. A role property in the implicit data object, a progress property in the implicit data object of this component. And then that data will be dynamically replacing uh, this must these mustache syntax expressions. Okay. Now how do we tell the component what name role and progress should be at any given time? Well when it is created in HTML, when it is rendered, all we need to do is come in here and say name equals Evan. Role equals mentor. Progress equals not applicable. That's one. Let's do the second one. We'll do Sam student and 76%. And then one more time. Let's do Courtney, student, and 89%. And just so we can see what one of these components would now look like without any of these properties fed in, I'll create another and just leave it empty. Leave it with no attributes. Now when I reload my page, We see Evan, Sam, Courtney, mentor, student, student. NA, 76%, 89%. And for that fourth empty one, name is empty, role is empty, progress is empty. Okay, so that's an example of using a component, a code template like this, to. Um, to present a series of information, such as, or, or a series of objects, if you will, such as different team members, uh, different pieces of inventory, um, any kind of information that you need to present on your page in iterations of the same thing. Every iteration of a student component is the same. Every iteration has a name, a role, a progress, and a flag button. The data is a little different, but the template, the code template, the pattern is the same. So it's a very reusable component and one that we need a lot of if we're monitoring hundreds and hundreds of students. Okay, so we've passed each component properties uh, in order to dynamically change the data for each one. Now that's all well and good, but with how many attributes we're now adding every time we create an app student component, it kind of feels like we're now writing more code than we would have if we had just used HTML. Uh, and that's valid. Part of that is because this is a very small component so far. Part of it is because it is a very small component. But part of it is also because realistically, this data, Evan, Sam, Courtney, would be coming from a back end. We wouldn't be storing it in our JavaScript or writing it in our HTML. We would be making a call to a database which would give us all of the student information, much like an API call. So I'm going to go ahead and create a student's array of objects which is going to contain that data as though we might receive it from a back end. Okay. Name Evan. I'll just call it people actually. Name Evan role 
mentor and progress and a Okay. Now when you see this, based on the way that we've taught you, you should immediately think for loop, for loop, for loop, for loop, for loop, or at least for in loop. You should think something along those lines. If you're um, if you're already learning ES6, you should think dot map. You should think something uh, that allows you to loop through and iterate with the content of this array. And we're gonna do exactly that, but using view. Okay? So this array of people, I'm going to store it in the data object of our master view instance. I'm going to create a student's property, and in it I am going to store the array of people. Okay, now I could just paste this entire array right in here, but I want to keep my view instance pretty clean and very, very readable. Okay. Now we're going to use that v4 directive which we already learned to loop through this, the content of the student's property. Now what HTML element are we going to use as our code template for our v4 directive? We're going to use the app-student component. v4, if you remember how v4 works, we're going to do something like student in students so for every item in the array stored in the students property of our data object for every student in the array we're going to generate an app student component or an app student element So I'm going to save there and reload, and we should see three empty app student components on our page. Unless I did not save my JavaScript. Here we go. Three empty app student components. So we're generating the right number. Now we need to tell it what information it should uh, pull from the student object in the student's array corresponding with each component. So we're going to tell it that name should be the student object dot name. The name property of that student object, of that student object. So that item in this array. For this one it's going to be the item at the zero index, the item at the one index. The item at the two index. This object has a name, this object has a name, this object has a name. And we're going to do the same for the other properties. Role equals student.role. Progress equals student.progress. Okay, now this isn't quite going to work, but I want you to see it first. I'm going to reload my page. And we now have content in there. But that's not what we want. And I want you to appreciate why this is happening. Student.name, what we typed in here, is being read as a string. Student.role is being read as a string. These are all being read as strings, as non-functioning text, non-functional text. And we don't want them to be read as strings. We want them to be read as dynamic variables, if you will, dynamic variables. To do that, the only way to activate the value of an attribute like this, to make it read as JavaScript rather than as a string, is by using some kind of V directive. And what we want for all of these, what you're always going to want when it comes time to turning a static string like this into dynamic JavaScript is going to be vbind. I'll just do it to the name for now and watch how it changes. 
Okay. Adding the bind before that attribute causes student.name to be read not as a text, not as a string, pardon me, but as JavaScript. Think of it that way, as dynamic code. So I'm going to add it to all three now. And we now have three dynamic, accurate components. And if I add more students, let's do Matt, Miranda, Ryan, Oops. If I add three more students, we now have three more components. We've only written one app student component, but the benefit of the for loop and the logic that we've set up in that component causes this same code template to display six times with different data, different iterations of data each time. So this is the perfect example of using a component. Um, but let's round, let's finish this up. Let's round it off by making that flag button work. So what do we want to have happen when a student is flagged? Let's say I want to flag Matt. Well, what I want to do is I want it to have a red background color. I want the text to turn white. Um, that's that's probably good. That stands out pretty well. Okay, that's what I want to have happen when I flag Matt. So there are a couple of different ways to do this, and this just comes back to basic view logic. Let's say that we have a class. I'm going to call it flagged, which turns the background color of an element red and the text color of an element white. Well, then what we need to do is add the class of flagged onto this div when this button is pushed. So we're going to use a pretty basic method here. And we can indeed include methods inside our components. Okay, so let's just set ourselves up. We're going to have data, we're going to have methods. The one quirk with data in a component is it can't simply be an object literal like it is down here. It actually needs to be a function which returns an object literal. The reason for that is a little difficult to comprehend with where you are right now. It has to do with that production level workflow using the view command line interface. So don't worry too much about it now. If you want to do research, you can. But it is a very unique issue. Just understand that inside a component, data needs to actually be a function that returns an object literal. And once that object is returned, anything can go inside it. We can have students in here, and we can still access it the way we would access any other property in the data object. Alright, so inside data, let's have a property of is flagged. And we'll have this set to false. And inside methods, let's have a flag method. And what flag is going to do is it's going to access this dot is flagged and change it to its opposite. So if this dot is flagged is false, it will become true. If it is true, it will become false. Okay, so that's all well and good. We need to invoke this method on button click. So inside the button, I'm going to add v on uh, v on click equals flag. So it's going to execute the flag method 
inside this component when this button is clicked. And that's going to change the is flagged property from false to true. Now we need to make this translate into this class. So we're going to bind a class name to the value of this property. Be bind the class attribute and inside there's going to be an object and we are going to bind the class of flagged to the value of is flagged so if is flagged is false the class of flagged will not exist on this div if is flagged is true it will so let's run through this one more time before we test it this div which contains everything will have the class of flagged only when an is flagged property in the data object is true when we click on this button it executes a method called flag the flag method accesses the is flagged property in the data object of this component and changes it to its opposite when the component is rendered is flagged is automatically set to false I'm going to save reload no errors and I'm going to flag math flagged 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 so we have actually created a self-contained little ecosystem here where all the pieces of a full view instance are at play data methods props is new for passing data from outside but it's very straightforward to understand and template is what's going to store the code base that will be rendered including any two-way data binding or view directives that you want this code base to use in the HTML when this component is created. I know that this can feel pretty complicated, but components and the skillful use of components is what makes frameworks, front-end frameworks, so incredibly valuable and so popular in the industry right now. So. I really suggest you try practicing this. Try practicing creating components that include props that require information to be passed in from the outside. Try creating components that include methods. Try generating a number of these components dynamically using a v4 directive. Practice with this. Practice, practice, practice. Go back and do the, the, the dog exercise instead create by creating an app dog component. Refactor the dog exercise with which you learned v4 and how to use the v4 directive and refactor it so that you are instead creating a, an app dog component or a my-dog component for every item in your dog array. This is a critical skill and incredibly valuable. As you get deeper into view, you will learn how to pass information from a child component to the parent, to the master view instance. Or if you have a component within a component, you can have your components communicating with each other. You can have children component communicate with other children components you will get to a point where you may create very sophisticated app that is component based which may look whose HTML rather will probably look something like this
that's it. And it will be a fully functional, fully dynamic, very sophisticated application whose HTML will be extraordinarily minimal and very, very approachable. Very, very approachable. We now know exactly what's on this page. We don't have to comb through a thousand lines of HTML. We now know, okay, there's going to be a big left sidebar, which is some macro level component. There's going to be center content. There's a right sidebar, and there's some kind of footer. It breaks down the broad strokes very, very quickly. And when you get to a professional production workflow, each one of these components is going to be represented by its own file which means if you find a problem with the left sidebar you're going to open up left sidebar dot view and everything you need is going to be right there in a clean orderly and contained fashion this is where the value of frameworks comes in now in the following module you're going to learn about routes you're going to learn about routes and routes also utilize components just in a slightly different way um, it can be confusing going into routes not understanding components, but all that the routes allow us to do is dynamically swap one component for another when you click somewhere or when some action happens. So between the two, between dynamic components and between uh, reactive routes, that is where the real value of these frameworks comes into play.